is Patrick Ellis, uh, President and CEO of the Myriad of Wildemar Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I'm doing a, a little interview here today with uh, Gordon Mize and Brian Bladowitz with Lee and Associates. Um, and wanted to kind of bend their ear a little bit and get some information from them about their industry right now, because I know this is a huge concern for a lot of people. Uh, but I think a lot of people who might be watching this might not know who you guys are. So, um, Gordon, if we start with you, why don't you uh, uh, tell everyone, you know, who you are and your, your kind of your background. Uh, and then, and then Brian, why did you do that right after Gordon? So Gordon, you go yeah. right ahead. All right. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you for having us on and I appreciate everything that you're doing for the community. Um, my, again, my name is Gordon Mize with Lee and Associates. Uh, I've been living in the Temecula Valley for the last 21 years and I've been with Lee and Associates for basically all of that time, about 20 years of it. And uh, I've been working specifically in, in the industrial real estate world. So I, I do leasing and sales of, of industrial buildings and land and development. And that's basically what I'm, I've been doing. I've raised my family here and uh, excited to see the growth in this area. Yep. You Thank you, Gordon. And uh, Patrick, again, uh, we're going to reiterate what uh, Gordon said. Thank you for everything you're doing for everybody in our community and whatnot. So appreciate that. Um, yeah, I'm Brian Bolatowicz. I am with Lee and Associates Commercial Real Estate. Obviously, we are the brokers. Um, you know, we brokered leasing sales of properties. I focus in on retail. I uh, work with a team of guys and gals that we handle quite a few listings out in this region. Uh, and 100% focus on the shopping center industry, sales, leasing, development, investment sales, whatnot. I've uh, been out here 21 years. Uh, this will be my 21st year, and uh, all with Lee and Associates. Uh, Great. Uh, raised my family out here, and I'm a resident still, and still doing our thing. So, yeah, very thanks good. for having us, Patrick. Sure. So, I'll start with you, Brian. So, kind of, if you wanted to give a little update, um, obviously, a lot of, we hear a lot about what's going on in the retail side, whether it's you know restaurant or mm -hmm. uh, you know. Uh, small convenience stores or uh, department stores, all those different types of things. Obviously one of the hugely impacted businesses out there right now. Um, kind of give everyone a sense of what you're seeing from your perspective, um, uh, you know, in, in the retail setting right now. Yeah, right now, Patrick, I mean, the dust is still settling with everything. So obviously, you know, there, there is no rule book that's been written to this. So I think it's being written, every day, each day, you know, in concert with, you know, local government and landlords and lenders and uh, just you know, the whole gamut. Because what happens is a tr trickle effect. You know, if business doesn't make money, they can't pay their rent. Landlord can't pay their lender when the rents don't come in. So we've got a you know, bigger problem, you know, that can, you know, could fester, you know, the longer this goes. Uh, you know, being that it is now, you know, we're into this for a couple of months now. We've seen some, you know, some big, big effects across our industry. Uh, obviously, you know, anything <clears throat> soft goods related, like Marshalls of the World, uh, are pretty well shut down. Uh, you do have you know, Targets and Walmarts and grocery stores thriving. Staples is one that's thriving. All the uh, at-home offices now that people are you know, creating and whatnot. So there, there are some industries like Home Depot, Lowe's that, that are thriving. Uh, but then you do have your uh, local level, you know, restaurant tours, your dry cleaners, uh, you name it, the smaller guys that unfortunately are kind of being guilty by association with this COVID. Um, and you know, the best thing I can recommend to any tenant is to work with your landlord. Uh, take the high road. Uh, be honest. Um, you know, show what, what, what the effect has been to your business during this COVID-19 outbreak. Uh, and hopefully there's some, you know, uh, empathy that the landlords will provide uh, in the form of maybe some deferments. Uh, that seems to be the resounding theme is deferments. Um, you know, some landlords, depending on their situation, if they have a lender with a highly leveraged loan, they need every rent payment to come in, uh, they're probably not going to be as flexible with the tenants. But then these owners that may or may not have any debt on the property and they're sitting, you know, fine. They don't have to report to their lenders. Uh, they're, I've seen them be a little more lenient with, with tenants uh, as far as some 
rental abatement, but again, that's a rarity. Most of it's been deferments, which you know could be a period of time where your two months, three months of rent that was deferred gets paid back over a six to 12 month period, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter, sometimes no interest, sometimes some interest. Uh, but most of the deferments we've seen happen are based on the zero interest, you know, spread out over a six to 12 month period. Um, and every, ca every case is different. It's all case by case. Some tenants, you know, may have a year left on their current term. They were doing fine before and they're, open, they're willing to ride this out. Well, they, this is a good time to work with your landlord to extend that lease and to work in some concessions potentially. Uh, and that's one route we take at Lee and Associates, you know, through the you know, Great Recession, is helping tenants and businesses out to uh, work through their leases, navigate their landlords, help try to close the gap and create a win-win situation for both parties. Um, so that, that's some of the best, you know, advice I can give to any business owner with dealing with their landlords and whatnot. Um, and I'm always available for questions. Great, available. thank you. And I, I think that's... That's such incredible, incredibly great advice right now because I think just having open communication is everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I mean, a lot of the the landlords are in the same exact position that they are in one way, shape, or form, and they're looking for help or assistance. You know, and some might be in a better position than others. So, correct. Uh, that's great. So, uh, Gordon, why don't you give me an idea of kind of what you're seeing on the industrial side? Um, I think that that's the the side that, you know, again, we don't, we don't see or hear a lot about right now in our current situation. Um, and, and we know that some of those tenants are doing well, you know, but there are those that aren't doing as well either and are trying to figure out how to get through this. So um, give us an idea of like what you're seeing also on the industrial side. Well, thanks, Patrick. Um, to mimic what Brian was saying, this is really important just very unusual time period for all of us and uh what we're seeing i guess is a step back last year and even in the first quarter of this year we were just having an incredible uh opportunity and incredible years for growth mm -hmm. and new businesses to come in and the, and the underlying fundamentals really i think are still there for many many companies it's just we're just so uncertain of how long this is going to last, uh, how long is it going to take to recover, and what is that going to look like once it has. But in general, the industrial market is still very strong. Our vacancies are, are still strong, uh, low vacancy rates. And um, we, have, we have a lot of companies that are, are actually doing well. Obviously, uh, things will potentially change, and there will be new businesses and new opportunities forthcoming and I think a lot of that's going to happen in the industrial sector warehousing e-commerce for example uh, will probably be growing mm -hmm. as well but you're right a lot of businesses are doing very very well and I think this area specifically to make the Marietta and the southwest Riverside County this is a great area for growth we do have some land and we have a lot of new opportunities and the cities are wanting to to do new development mm -hmm. for the sure. most part yeah, and I, I think that's a, a great point. I mean, I had a conversation with, you know, Dr. Chris Thornburg a couple of weeks ago, and that point resonated is, is that, that, you know, going into this, we're in that nebulous of unknown area. And the, the one thing, though, was is we went into it with this incredibly strong economy. And the hope is, is that the uncertainty is there, but if we can get past that part, that hopefully certain aspects of that will still be there on the other side to help bring us back out of it. Um, so I'm gonna, I, gonna say that you're probably in the same boat as, as Brian goes as far as conversations that anyone who might be struggling in the industrial area to have kind of with their you know, property management companies or owners um, if they are struggling. Well, I, there, there's many, many companies that are struggling. You know, there's businesses that just, they, they can't get in their product. The landlords are in the same position. They still need to make their payments. They need to pay their property manager. They need to pay their bills. And so I think it's still very, very difficult. One thing that, as Brian said, um, re really the best thing that I can possibly advise tenants um, is to 
definitely communicate with their property managers, with their landlords, uh, with the owners direct. You have to stay in communication. If you don't talk and you assume things because you read it in the news, that's where everybody kind of gets into trouble. Yeah. Um, there, there's a lot of, of legal components out here right now that maybe are getting pushed off, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to continue once we get back on track. And I, and I don't think we're going to be uh, in this position for a long period of time, but definitely communicating with your property manager, landlord, your owner is the, by far the best, best thing you can do as a tenant, not to wait and hope that things are going to uh, just take care of itself and that everybody else is going to try to help because even though everyone wants to, you got to communicate. And I guess the other thing I'll, I'd say to that, Factor, you brought this up with a lot of the, the groups that have come online and worked with you is definitely try to take advantage of the programs that are out there. Um, you know, making sure that you're going after what the government's offering and providing is uh, definitely a viable and useful item for uh, all tenants right now. You know, the PPP programs, hopefully we'll get some more funds coming back. I, I know the, the funds have been used up at this point, but uh, EIDL. There's a lot of programs out there that can help people. And you definitely want to make sure if you're a tenant that you're trying to look into those and use those funds as best as you can. Yeah. And and even I, I would say for those who might be on the other side who do own some of these properties, right? Um, you know, I take the example that the center that our offices are in, you know, it's one gentleman owns that center. You know, everyone thinks it's probably a big corporation or something. But right. One guy owns that center. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he's facing the same situations that a small business guy is, is facing. So, you know, you, you got to kind of think about it from both, you know, both sides of the, of the aisle there in, in that regard. Um, the other part to that, too, is, is, you know, for those who are looking on, on the other side, who are property owners the, the, or are looking in, in to get developing more projects, you know, one of the great things that, that is not talked about as much right now is if you can qualify for one of the standard SBA loans right now, whether it's 7A or, or what have you, those loans are still making those loans. They're still good. There's a great rate on those loans. They're 30-year loans. And they're paying the first six months of that loan for you if you Correct. qualify by September. That's huge for some people, and especially for the owners of these properties, if they can get that, um, or somebody who's looking to develop, those are things that a lot of people don't understand or realize right now, but another huge opportunity for different people. And I think that that, since, you know, hopefully, you know, mid-May, we it looks like we might have some sort of opening up of things here, um, that changes everything. And I think that uh, you you can look at some new opportunities as well as much as it's it's so hard for people right now. Correct. Very very true. Yeah. Um, yep. uh, what do you see? Are you hearing anything, Brian, on your side as far as the retail side, as far as um, how those businesses are trying to? Uh, I know you don't necessarily work with them as much on the day to day stuff, but obviously you're working with retailers who are looking into going into locations and they need to know parameters of what is expected of them. Obviously doing business now in the future is going to be different. You're going to need different spacing between aisles. Probably you're going to need different things. Are you guys starting to see those conversations come up in some of your uh, meetings and such? As far as like how a tenant is changing its operations, things of that nature. Either that or even like if you have a new tenant that's coming into a retail spot and, you know, they're just starting to look into this, sure. you know, they may have thought, okay, I need 2,000 square feet to be able to run this business. But now you think about it and you're like, okay, I need to have bigger air, bigger aisles because there has to be better distancing. So now does the footprint I'm thinking about change from 2,000 to 2,500 or 3,000 because I need more space to provide these right. requirements that are probably going to be, you know, to an extent mandated, whether it's on a state level or a federal level. Right. And that's the thing. I mean, nothing's really been mandated just yeah. yet. Right. So the, that I still say the dust is still selling a lot of this yeah. stuff. So, you know, if I'm a tenant, you know, trying to open a new business, I'm probably holding off right now until I know what those mandates. Right. Okay. 
Um, I really can't decide if I need that extra thousand feet of dining area to fit 30, 40, 50 more tables, right? right. Uh, I think that's going to be a you know, big thing that's going to be uh, figured out over the next uh, 30 to 60 days. Um, I do think that, you know, tenants right now should be figuring out how to serve their market, uh, trying to do what they can uh, within their own confines of their business to support the community, support, you know, local, you know, uh, support the community as far as uh, delivery food, you know, things of that nature. But what I'm, it's not a vacation for people. So if people think they're on vacation right now, they should be really working hard to figure out how they can, again, try to generate some sort of income and give back to the community. And I think, you know, that goes a long way too with landlords being, showing them exactly what you've been doing during this time to help a, you know, shore up your business, to help the community, you know, things of that nature. So I think that um, that capital created is priceless with your landlords and you can utilize that to help better leverage yeah. yourself, you know, for uh, rent deferrals and things of that nature. Right. Uh, no, and I think I think that's a great um, bit of advice. Is kind of you know right now you're you're at home, you can't do some of your day to day stuff, but setting up and planning for that that day that it does come, I think is is huge. And Absolutely, be doing. Yeah, um, so I mean, if our 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 deal flow has obviously you know been challenged over the last couple months. Oh yeah, you know people are still out looking at new locations. We you know. You know, a lot more chain tenants are out there uh, with requirements because they report to the stock market. They have to show growth. They have to open stores. So there, there still is activity out there uh, right now that I'm, I'm working on. Uh, and a lot of it, you know, a lot of people are negotiating in uh, potential delays because of the COVID, uh, things of that nature where they can't get their plans approved or they can't hire contractors or certain trades or inspections are delayed. So we're, we're <clears throat> we've come up with, you know, some creative language, you know, in, transactions going forward incorporating that and that's been very helpful in getting you know, several leases signed over the last uh, month or so and continuing with several others as well so uh, I think you know just having sound uh, advice going into a deal just making sure you're planning for the what-ifs is the best advice I can give anyone who's looking at opening a business during this time yeah, and and I love I love to hear that there's uh, flexibility in that. So, and um, that's huge. And I think that's going to be one of those things that everyone's going to have to get very used to is flexibility. So, um, well, I'll I'll kind of close up by um, again saying thank you. I, I will mention that um, I know that we had uh, started off a coalition with a, another chamber here in Southern California about a month or so ago, the Safe Small Business Coalition. Uh, which had been trying to figure out how to work and, and work uh, save some of our smaller businesses out there, um, which we kind of came around and actually ended up uh, partnering with an um, uh, organization that you guys are, are very much involved with, which is ICSC, the International Council of Shopping Centers. And now our coalition has aligned with, with uh, their, the joint coalitions that they've put together and are pushing for uh, some uh, help with this next phase in, in, in creating a, a COVID-19 recovery fund. So um, I, I know that we'll be working closer together on that in the future and, and the advocacy that's going to be needed with that because there is going to be a lot more needed uh, here in the coming days, especially from our for uh, from a lot of our smaller businesses. So uh, Gordon and Brian, I really, really do appreciate your time and, and thank you for sharing with us. Um, and uh you know, I, I'm sure if anyone reaches out to us with questions or whatever, we'll kind of get them in connection with you and see about making sure that we get people all the help that they can possibly get. So well, thank, good, you thank you, Patrick. Guys.